Well, sometimes you want to trickle charge your battery with a solar panel if you go away for a couple of weeks or you're not using your car for a couple of weeks. Um, so is it okay to just charge your battery with the solar panel only? Uh, I think it, I found out a way to do it with a five watt uh, solar panel and it's going to cost about 15 bucks. So stand by and I'll show you what I'm Take using. Look at this setup now where i am uh, got the voltmeter right there, I'm, my battery's right there, and I'm using a solar panel, panel on the roof, a five watt solar panel. I've got voltmeters probes on the, the this uh, connector right here, and I'm reading 13.64. It's been in the sun for a little while. 13.63. Now what I'm going to do is turn over the solar panel right here. So no sun's going to be good. And we're down to 12.65. Now we can see that we have an open circuit voltage of 20.5. And uh, I'm connected just to the, the solar panel right now. Now we'll look at the meter setup. Normally, if you're going to read voltage, right here you're going to want the, the want the red probe here and the black probe here but what we're going to do is we're going to read um, current um, amps and milliamps so what we need to do is take this red and put it over here and this is going to allow us to um, read the read the amps but this is a warning though you can't exceed certain amount of amps you have to read the your meter on that and it's going to cause a dead short across across these leads so you have to make sure that you're you're not you know you don't have any of your probes hooked up to anything when you go into this mode now i'm showing you uh i've got i'm in the i'm reading milliamps right now you can kind of see the ma there I'm reading uh, close to 300 milliamps, which is um, 0.3 amps. And you can see that I have the uh, black lead on my voltmeter and the red lead on my voltmeter. I'm reading the line that runs over to the battery. So we're right now negative, I guess, because of the way I've rigged it. I've read the read. Uh, the, I'm r running the 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 black on the solar panel side and the red on the battery side, and that's producing a negative number. So what I have here now is a diode. I'll show you the diode in a little bit, but notice that the stripe is on the battery side. The stripe is on the battery side, and it's permitting current to flow from the panels over to the battery and right now this is the measurement of that current which is 322 milliamps so now we're going to say what happens if we were to bypass the diode looks like very little happens when i bypass the diode okay Here's where the stripe is facing away from the battery. So you can see that there's no current. Now what I'm going to do is bypass the diode again. and You can see the current fire up. So when the stripe is facing away from the battery, it um, doesn't allow any current to go this way. Now we've reoriented the the diode to where the stripe is facing toward the battery and we've got current on and we're going to see now about changing the position of the solar panel to face it away from the sun. And now we can see that we've got um, a very low negative voltage. So the diode, the negative current. 
So we can see now that the diode is preventing current from leaking backwards. Let's just see how good a job it's doing. I can do a bypass now. So with the bypass on, I'm about 1.7 milliamps, 1.6 milliamps to the negative. So what's happening is the current is coming from the battery and flowing across this, this line and going back to the solar panel there. And the solar panel is gobbling up current from the battery. And so if we want to stop that from happening, we just need to put the bi diode back in place and it takes the reverse current out. Now we're going to look at the voltage on the solar panel side of the, vo the, the line on the diode and it's 13.44. So let's see if we can't measure the other side. So it's 1307. So the difference between 1307 and 1344 is the voltage drop. So we are losing some power um, according to Ohm's law. We are losing some power um, on by this using this diode. So we're 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 losing about you know uh, thirty around thirty millivolts around there in in power at this current. So the battery is seeing about thirteen point one one volts, and when my car was just sitting here. The battery was at about 12.6, 12.4. Um, it doesn't look like there's much chance of overcharging this battery with this small 5 watt panel. I've done it for a few days and it doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, I mean it, it helps, obviously it helps the battery. Um, how how do you how are you going to go about hooking this up for you? Well, there's a you can plug it into the cigarette lighter. There's a a um, a, a plug an electronic plug in in my car that I'm thinking about plugging in the battery into. This is about a $14 uh, solar panel and the and it's probably about a dollar part. So it's pretty easy to rig up. You don't want too big of a solar panel there. Um, I am using uh, charge, I have used um, PWM charge controllers and they are charging at about, uh, they're, they're, they would charge the battery, uh, probably a bit a higher voltage, uh, I think. And um, for about $8, you can buy those, which I'll, I'll show you videos on that. I'm just trying with the diode only right now because it's just a quite simple system to set up. Uh, those charge controllers are taking about 10 to 15 milliamps of, of, um, of, of current, okay? And this is taking probably 0.4 volts of, of power, of uh, AC voltage. So I'm not sure what the trade-off there is. They're probably gonna charge your battery long-term. If you have an RV that's sitting all the time, it would probably be better to go with a charge controller. But for my purposes, every once in a while, I just you know park my car for a couple of weeks, don't use it very much. And this probably is gonna do it for me. So the diode is here in this circuit. And the, cir the diode I was using is this 5819. This is a shot key diode and it's good for one amp. However, I put it in this position and, and I drove it to about an amp and it got really hot. 
so it's probably not a good idea to run that anywhere close to an amp maybe about 500 uh, I'd say run it about halfway maybe um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna give up when you get a bigger diode like this one right here which is a it's a 5408 is uh, let's see if we can see it so 5408 is is this diode here this is a 5 amp diode but it's gonna you're gonna get yourself about 200 uh, more uh, millivolts of drop with it across um, this diode as we saw so if you're gonna just run the 5 watt panel you can just stick with this 5819 I think you'll be well under an amp and um, so what we're gonna do is is uh, crank this up to uh, let's say 1.2 amps 11.6 volts let's do it let's go to 12 volts on it okay I got the amperage I can only go up to about 11 and a half so we're we're at it. the difference is there is six uh, it's about what four, it's about 600 600 um, millivolts difference and I'm driving this this pretty big load right here let's feel the wires here not bad this uh, it's it's hot I mean I can still touch it with my fingers but you know it's pretty hot at 1.2 amps um, so this one if you want to go if you want to be a little safer if you've got a bigger battery and you've got a little bit bigger solar panel you might want to uh, switch to, to that diode